Hi there, um, my name's Chris and I'm a member of Camden Library staff. This is another of our ongoing series of book reviews. Uh, today I'm going to talk about not just one book but actually a series. Um, and This is a series of novels which are gaining quite a cult readership. Uh, they are the Slow Horses, or sometimes called the Slough House series by Mick Heron. Um, I'm not going to specify one title because, because if you read one you'll probably want to read the series. Um, I haven't got a copy of the actual books here. Now you can probably see that we're in sort of Ian Rankin cover design territory here. There's a, uh, a slightly lo there's a lonely figure silhouetted against the rainy street, um, or uh, sinister blitz passageways, underground walkways. The titles uh, are in uh, a nice day glow colour. Um, just to make them stand out on the shelves. So this is definitely thriller territory. Um, these books are nominally spy novels, but in reality they actually cover quite a wide field. Um, a lot of the attraction of the book, I think, is about the fact that they're set in a contemporary, recognisable London. Um, there's modern, uh, also very recognisable politics going on in the background. Um, as the books are about uh, a team of people, lots of inter-office rivalries, um, and there's a strong satirical edge as well. So they are very funny books, despite the grim realities that face the central characters. Now the characters um, are known as the Slow Horses, and they are a constantly changing group of former British MI5 operatives who have very badly fouled up their careers in one way or another. And so, um, because they can't be uh, released back into the everyday community because of the things that they know, they've been exiled to a safe location where they supposedly can't cause any harm. And this is the very ordinary and inoffensive looking Slough House. Um, if you run a Google image search for Slough House, you'll see that the there is an actual scruffy London building that Mick Heron has based it on. Um, and you probably also spotted the connection between Slough House and Slow Horse. Slow Horses are the uh, rather impolite nickname that have been given to these characters. So the leading characters are the ex-agents themselves, and most of them have scars, either mental or physical. Uh, some of them are drug addicts, some of them are weapons freaks, they're hackers or they're gamblers, or in some cases they're just ordinary people who've got weaknesses which have made them useless to MI5. So it's difficult to envisage them as heroes, but some of them are more likeable than others. Uh, I would say it's not safe to get too attached to any of the characters, because as you might expect from a spy novel, there's actually quite a high body count during the course of the book. The slow horses tend to get landed with jobs that nobody else wants, so they have to escort unpopular politicians, or they have to track down who is making unsavoury, unsuitable posts on uh, MI5 laptops. Um, and somehow a tense and uh, sort of often bizarre situation will arise. I think one of the reasons that the books work so well is because of the incompatibility of the different characters and their need to find a basis for cooperation, which is often against their better instincts. These are proper spy novels, I should emphasise, um, and they have proper spy novel plots, but a lot of the drama and the comedy comes from the everyday, from the everyday wrangles of office life, for example, who's stolen my stationery, uh, who's making unwelcome chat-up lines, territorial rivalry, rivalry, sorry, and so on. And also, um, to single out one particular character, the awfulness of their boss. Um, and here's a quote from a review, which is the Mail on Sunday, if you must know. Um, In charge of this failure factory is the grotesque, obese, flatulent chain smoker, boozer and consumer of horrible food, Jackson Lamb. Now, in my opinion, Jackson Lamb is already one of the great monstrous characters of British fiction. He's not for the easily offended, you have been warned. Um, Mick Heron, the writer, uh, is quoted as saying, he says things that I would never say. I look back at some of those lines and I think, my God, did I write that? My mother reads this stuff. A lot of Lamb's best lines um, are unquotable here because they tend to involve swearing or bodily functions. Um, here's a polite snatch of dialogue which just gives you some idea of where he's coming from. One of the slow horses says to him, You want me to issue a shoot to kill order? 
And Lamb replies, well, there's no, short, no point in shooting to wound. People would only get hurt. And that's basically lots more of that kind of thing. So the Slough House books take place against the clearly identifiable backdrop of recent British politics. Um, some of the events in the books are based on well-known news stories, and sometimes the satire is quite painfully obvious. Um, one recurring character that I should mention is the opportunistic Home Secretary, who is named Peter Jard in the books. If you think back to who the Home Secretary was in the mid-2010s, uh, you may be able to identify this character. I'm going to risk a quote here. A bulky Peter Judd is a bulky man, not fat, but large. And though he'd turned 50 the previous year, he retained the schoolboy looks and the fluffy haired manner that had endeared him to the British public. Any ideas? Well, there are other 2010 plus themes uh, in the books, which include things like cults, uh, Brexit. Brexit is a theme rather unusually. Uh, domestic terrorism, most of which the slow horses find themselves engaging with entirely by accident, I should say. Now, uh, McCarran is an excellent writer. He's capable of composing elaborate descriptive passages and laugh out loud sequences. Um, here's a sentence that I like. Here's a, a sentence that I like, and you have to really read it twice to get the best out of it, I think. Um, but it's of one character. His evening had already gone wrong in some unspecified way, and he was waiting for it to go more wrong differently. Regular readers get rewarded with references and jokes which run between different books in the sequences. But I, I would say don't be afraid to dip in at any point. You don't have to read them in sequence. There is a sort of narrative thread, but you don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, I find the books compulsively readable, assuming that you can cope with the uh, nihilistic and rather antisocial attitudes of some characters. So... That's the Slough House series of books by Mick Heron. Uh, the seven full-length books so far 